Uh, hello everybody, Steven here. Um, so this is my the ten tenth day um, since the start of the uni. Um, so I decided to just uh, continue the vlogs and kind of talk about what I've been doing. So it will help me um, in the long term to to kind of track uh, what I've done and maybe track my progress. Uh, hopefully it's progress. Uh, so in the last video, I kind of show you my process in doing my figure ground manually. Uh, it was kind of a painful process, but it's uh, it's mostly done. Um, I mean, that's where I'm going to stop for now. Because tell you the truth, to arrive at this stage, uh, it took me about eight hours. Eight hours. Um, I can tell you, like I was, this part was not fun. Uh, all those small little houses. Um, a lot of them have like those little corners and and you have to imagine that I was just clicking uh, one corner each time um, so yeah I mean I could have just do rectangle and square um, which would have made it faster but I guess it doesn't really um, represent the, the finer grain of the city um, but uh, that being said doing them individually uh, give me the advantage that I kind of know them individually now like and and now I can say that, like I can see here that's like the main area commercial with the bigger buildings um, and here you can see there's a lot of open space that's where the all the admin like um, the assembly um, I think there's like the town hall I mean not the tunnel, because the, the tunnel of Papete is here. This one is more like the, the tunnel of French Polynesia. And I think here there's like the police. Um, and, and you can really see the difference um, when you look at the, the figure ground. Uh, like this area, that's houses, that's where people live, where it's not as regular. Um, here you can clearly see there's a, some type of grid, even if it's all um, diagonal. Uh, here's uh, houses again and the bigger buildings are I think the shops and restaurants and here in this area that's where the it's a military base um, I think that's where they store the, the fuel there's some um, industrial and commercials and that's like the the wharf uh, where they bring all the containers um, here I haven't drawn it, but there should be like the garden. Um, let's see. Here, yeah. so this should be this garden. And yeah, so that figure ground is done. Uh, what I've done next is um, kind of go into and design and, and did the little book because uh, that's one of my project is to. Wait, let me get the book. So I want to make a book like this, I don't know if you can see it, it's called Made in Shanghai, um, bought it I think three or four years ago when I went there and uh, it's just a book showing like, oh, you wouldn't see anything but uh, it's just showing different buildings, it's not like a specific landmark but um, just categorize, cataloging different buildings that you might see in the city. Um, so the format of the book is kind of like this, um, there's a list of like 50 buildings and I've picked a few of them already, uh, the one that you can find in, in Papete. Uh, right now there has not been um, ranked in any typical order yet, uh, I might group them depending on uh, either their location or their, perp their program, like the purpose. Then this is just some uh, placeholder for some text uh, about giving some history about uh, Papete. And that's kind of the format of the book's gonna be. So you're gonna have the title or the name of the building, where it's located, um, its functions, a little bit of history, and then some photos of it. It's just to um, catalog some of the buildings so you never know in the future they might disappear unless you have um, 
uh, a souvenir. Um, what else have I done? Uh, I also studied. Oh, I think this is a bit early, but try to lay out um, my uh, research document that I have to submit at the end. Um, I think I wanted to do that just to put all the placeholder, and as I start writing, I can just fit it in and. It will give me the idea on a, how the overall document will look and maybe think about the design of it after. Because I just plan to do um, do a bit of everything at the beginning and slowly detail, detail, detail. So at the end, uh, I'll define a product uh, rather than just do um, like a writing and then drawing, like in a in a linear sequence. I prefer to. Um, do everything at the same time and slowly detail it. Well, that's my technique. Well, hopefully that's a good choice. Um, okay, what else? Um, oh yeah, um, two days ago I had my first meeting with my supervisor because usually when you do your your final year, uh, you'll be assigned a, a main supervisor and uh, like a associate one that. The supervisor is the one that usually meet once a week, and the associate will be uh, like maybe once a month or I don't know, up to you. I haven't seen my um, associate yet, uh, but with my supervisor, um, that's kind of the thing that I talked about. Um, so of course, in the research document, they have introductions, uh, main body, and conclusion, and so. At this stage, I'm really focusing on uh, what I want to talk about in my thesis, uh, in my research project. Um, so the two things that I've decided to stick with is uh, memory and um, narrative, more like a storytelling. Um, you know, last year when I was doing my proposal, uh, I was really a bit confused um, about the part that I need to talk about in the research project. Uh, I think in the initial, initial one that I submitted, um, it was more about Tahiti, so like that part here. But I realized what I needed in the first place was um, talking about theories that will help me um, designing after. So, like for memory, um, how do I explain? really sorry because I'm still a bit confused. There's so much things that I've been reading uh, uh, but hopefully by the end of the year um, I'll be able to uh, explain it too clearly. Um, but let, let's say I, I tell you um, Tahiti and what's the first thing that you think about? Most people that I talk to they, they think about the beach, uh, the sun, um, the house on the water, um, maybe the food, exotic fruits and stuff like that. So that's one way of remembering. But uh, that's usually what the tourists think about. I mean, I'm, I'm born in Tahiti and even though that's what I would think it is, like if people ask me to explain Tahiti, that's how I would describe it. Uh, but that's not how I lived it. I mean, uh, I didn't go to those um, white, I mean, uh, I mean, those things that describe it's at the hotel, and well, I didn't go to the hotel every day or every weekend, um, so it was a bit different, so I spent most of the time maybe in the city, and go to school, and maybe uh, meet friends uh, here um, at the food truck, so maybe go to the clubs and stuff like that, but uh, what you see as a tourist is not um, what I was living, so I would have different uh, memories of what tide is, and and yeah, so that that's this idea that um, people with different memories about a place. And what else? Uh, I think I had collective memory. So I think it's when uh, many people. Um, remember the same thing and start to become history um, 
It's just to say that one of the sub topic of my research project will be uh, the nuclear test that has been done in um, French Polynesia uh, in the 1960s to 1990s? Yeah, 96 or something. So that's, I'm sure a lot of people don't know um, that it happened in French Polynesia, even though it's not in Tahiti, but it's still part of it, it's not that far away. Um, but yeah, you would never think about nuclear test when I say Tahiti. Um, but that's one of the memory um, and I think at the moment uh, one needs to be remembered but that has, is still um, contested uh, and then so I got a few books here I kind of skimmed through them a lot of things to read uh, I think that's one of the issue I've had with having Google, uh, it's just so easy to type, uh, let's say, memory, um, research, PDF, and then you get uh, a lot of studies that's been done, a lot of essays, and you save them all, and there's like 20 to read, uh, they're like all 50, 20 to 50 pages, and yeah, you just don't have time. <laughs> um, so you end up with too many um, literature, um, so it's really important that you just pick the one that you think are the most relevant. And one way of doing it is, I think, like in, in this case, when I was reading about memory, a lot of the people were referencing that guy, uh, Pierre Nora. So I guess his text was important, so that's what I, I picked him. And so yeah, that's my little tip, just in every essay that you read, look in the bibliography, see which guys keep coming back, and I guess that's the book that you need to read. Um, and then I have uh, storytelling. Um, I think this came about because uh, I know that memory for Polynesian culture was mostly oral, like people was telling stories um, about who their parents were, about the uh, myth and legends and stuff like that. So. I guess in my design I wanted an architecture that could speak to people and that could make them feel something. Um, so I guess that's why I'm going to study that part. I mean, I've heard about it at uni. Uh, Tudor has been talking about it, but you know, uh, until you have to design it with that in consideration, it never really sticks in, into your head. Uh, hopefully it will this time. <laughs> Uh, and then there's gonna be a lot of research done about Tahiti. Um, lucky for me, uh, I went back um, like two, three weeks ago. I went there for 12 days. I took some photos. Uh, let me see. Just gonna show you. So those are the few photos that I, that I took when I went there. I think one of the thing that I realized um, when I went there, there's a lot of artworks now, a lot of nice murals, um, I can have a look at this one, uh, you can see it's really big and really realistic in this case, and really colorful, um, most of them, oops, has like a um, Polynesian team, um, and there's some other ones, oh come on, doesn't want to show it. Oh uh, well, never mind. And then I took some photos of the architecture, of course, just showing the type of building that you'd find in Tahiti. Uh, for example, this one is like a apartment type. Looks pretty run down and decay. Um, this one is an old Chinese shop, I think, uh, or like a carpentry shop, but it's closed down. Um, and then some more apartments in the city. And this is the assembly, the French Polynesian assembly, where they do all the political stuff. Um, some more administrative buildings. Um, that's like the the ferry building that I just showed you earlier in uh, what was it? In here, yeah, that was this one. This one here. 
And let's just go back. Um, ah, that's my old school. And then I took some photo about the texture that I could see, um, like stone, some of the trees. Really like this one. There's some uh, fabric that you can get at the market. This one, it was under this statue. I think that's coral that's been just um, put together and then I don't know glued. Um, and then some of the photo in the garden, in the Paufe garden, which is this area there. Um, yeah, it was fun to walk there. I think every day I left the house at like nine o'clock and start walking. Um, because let me see, where I'm staying at the moment was around here. So I just walking. Um, because I mean I could have drive, but then I wanted to get a feel of the city. Um, as a pedestrian. So I I will walk through here, and then from there I could eat. I went on this side, around here, and then another day I came back, and then I went all the way here, and I think that's where I took um, oops, I took this photo here, like those photo here, and that's like the sea wall that you can see along there um, it was funny when uh, I was there I was taking photos uh, I randomly started to talk to a guy like because he saw me I was taking photos and he's like oh where are you from I said oh well actually uh, I'm from Tahiti as well I just um, had him back for a while and and I came back to see my family and take some photos for like a research project I'm doing for my um, last year of architecture and and yeah I was just asking questions about uh, what he felt about Teddy and um, uh, if there's stuff that needs to be changed in the layout of the city you know architecture wise and uh, urban planning wise he said oh no not really I mean he said Teddy is fine the way it is uh, I say for him the the things that need really to change is the way how Tahitians think. Their mentality. Um, and actually, that's something that I hear quite a lot. Um, I don't know exactly why. Um, it's just how the people behave. and uh, So maybe that's something I have to discover. And and maybe kind of integrate that into my um, design response because um, I think the guy is saying that people need to think about more uh, about what they're doing and where they're going and stuff like that and he said that it's, uh, until people um, behave correctly um, like Tahitian they we couldn't move on or something don't remember. I should have recorded that discussion. Um, but yeah, I just um, walked all around the city. I think uh, yeah, it took a while. I think yeah, I spent like seven hours walking every day. Mm. And then I took some photos of uh, food that I've seen on the market, different colors. And some flowers, some nice textures. Um, really like this one. Hope it's gonna show. Uh, it's when I went to. Um, there's a museum in Tahiti. Um, not much to to see at the moment because it's in renovation. But this was um, outside. Um, there was a table made of a made of a tree trunk, and that was the the patterns of that tree. Um, don't remember the name. I should have taken. Yeah, I should have photographed that too. Um, but yeah, a uh, lot of nice fruits, uh, pretty flowers. Of course, there's the, the beach, the islands, and oh yeah, there's there's pollution too, huh? I mean, there's pollution everywhere, but uh, 
that's not the typical image that you would see in the brochure oops well can't show you that but um, you can see a lot of plastic bottles and there's some uh, abandoned cars I mean it's there I mean just have to accept it and then from there uh, take action um, finds ways to uh, make people aware about the pollution that's uh, in the on the island and just do something about it mm. so yeah um, those are the photos from my site visit what else did I talk about Oops. and yes so I got some books as well when I went there this one uh, lucky to find that because uh, I went to the public library and I saw a lot of books about Tahiti um, but they were quite old I think this one from uh, 1990 I mean it's like what, 28 years old uh, but uh, I was a bit skeptical if that I could find it in the in the library because I wanted to buy it uh, lucky enough I, wa <laughs> I found a copy um, I was really lucky um, what else did I got? I think I got uh, this book as well uh, it's about like a vernacular architecture from Tahiti and I got this book here I think that's the the one I like the most that's like a graphic novels about two guys who are going into uh, the Tuamotu uh, which is another archipelago in French Polynesia and I think they went there because they wanted to know about the the history of the canoe with the sail um, and there's a lot of uh, nice watercolors maybe one day I'll just do a, a review or oh, maybe to show you a bit better about the images oh, I can't really see but uh, yeah I'll post photos of this later on because this book is is really really nice um, it was a good insight about how people were living in the island so and okay so that's like the site context about Tahiti the geography um, and then I was going to talk about the history because I wanted to um, kind of research the change of culture as during the different eras um, because of course when the first European came um, uh, there was introductions of uh, what new materials, alcohols, uh, uh, new food um, so of course that changed how Tahitians were living and then uh, Christianity came then the French protectorate colonial period and contemporary period. I think this one is really important for my research because that's um, when the nuclear test happened. Because um, the nuclear test was really the, <laughs> the explosion uh, of the culture because it really shifted how people um, lived in Tahiti. Because I think before. Um, a lot of people were living on a subsistence um, culture where they were farming their own food and maybe selling off the thing they have extra so they can buy other goods uh, but I think when the nuclear test came to, to Teddy a lot of people went to work for for that like uh, they went to uh, building the airports building um, the town centers and um, working in service jobs uh, because of course uh, when the nuclear test came to Tahiti uh, a lot of uh, soldier came as well so there was lots more people and they needed to be served um, so that's what led to the like economic booms of Tahiti um, so yeah, um, in a few months or hopefully in a few weeks, I can tell you a bit more about the the history and what I found. 
Um, so if you hear something that, uh, that's wrong, uh, just let me know so I can correct that. Um, and then I'm going to look into culture, uh, more specifically on the material culture, how people were using uh, like wood, uh, flowers, and so the stone to some sculptures, some uh, what do you call that? Uh, making canoes, uh, building a house. Um, also look into dances and theaters, like um, how they perform, and some of the important person um, in Tashin culture. Um, for this one, I got a few books as well. Ancient Tady, um a really old book from 1928, um, kind of telling about ancient Tahiti. Um, I think in 1850s, um, about when it was, because Tahiti was discovered in 1767, um, so maybe like 100 years after. But yeah. Mm, and then, oh, it's time for precedent review as well. So I already picked a few that I kind of like. Um, of course, uh, Jewish Museum, um, pretty famous already. I uh, started reading some essays about it. Um, in the end, I felt that it's pretty um, relevant with what I'm doing. Um, and then I get the Hiroshima Peace Center. Obviously, this one I took it because it was um, in memory of the bombing, uh, the first nuclear attack in uh, 1945. Um, and also because he has a mixed uh, program. I mean, there's like a, a museum on the war and the nuclear testing, and there's a conference halls and a memorial. Um, then I'm going to pick the 9-11 uh, Memorial Museum. Um, first because well they have the two memorials of the Twin Towers and and now the museum is in between. be good to study um, how the museum relates to the memorials and the type of experience they create uh, to tell about the, the stories uh, of the event and give you some ideas about how they, they kind of display um, uh, the exhibition and then I got this one this one was really interesting um, it's in Bogota Colombia uh, I haven't seen the building before but what I really like about it, uh, it's a memorial about uh, a conflict that happened there. And it's this image that I like here. It's about this woman like um, putting something in the wall. Um, still not sure exactly what it is. Uh, but it kind of reminds me uh, one of the traditional custom in, in Tahiti where uh, after a woman uh, gave birth, um, she keep the placenta and then dig into the earth um, as a way to uh, return the child to mother nature and um, so that it could be protected. Um, might not exactly be the right um, story. Um, I'll try to clarify that in the future, but um, this image really... Uh, reminded me of that because I think that wall looks like a brick wall or maybe a ram earth type of wall and that idea of putting back the something into it like a, a memorial inside the wall um, was really relevant with what I'm doing and and the size of it looks pretty similar to my site and it's also um, the program is uh, there's like a performance area 
maybe some uh, library type and I really like the courtyards as well so you can include some of the nature um, the car parks um, and I also like the fact that it's um, sunk into the ground and yeah so that's an idea that I might um, use in my design as well um, oops this one uh, I came about after watching a tech talk online uh, or, uh, maybe not a tech talk I think I just typed memorial on YouTube and that was one of the videos and really loved this um, this wasn't about like a memorial about a, a conflict or a tragedy but it was more into in memory of um, of what is his name uh, NG Ready I think it was like a scientist uh, in India so he was in commemoration of his of his life and how he kinda helped uh, his community and I think I just like the how he the nature and and the simplicity it looks so simple um, but I like how the, the architect managed to symbolize different uh, meanings like for example where is the drawings I think there was one of the path like this one that was showing earlier like uh, he was saying that this path is a symbol of this uh, evolution like at the beginning um, the pavers are all rough uh, but as uh, life progress they become smoother and smoother and some of the the tiles transform into grass and become nature and it was also um, a symbol of uh, the guy in his later life be becoming a philanthropist and starting to gi give, m give more um, I think this is like the tree of knowledge or something but yeah, uh, in this uh, precedent, there's a lot of uh, symbolism. Uh, oh yeah, this one, it's a bit different from the other one, uh, because this is a cultural center uh, designed by Renzo Piano. And I think this one, I took it more because of the, the tectonics and the detailing and um, Renzo Piano's approach into his design where he took the the Kanak culture uh, in consideration uh, to create his response to really create an architecture that's of uh, of the place and that locals could relate to it's uh, like a, a modern take of their uh, vernacular architecture and that's something that I would like to have in my proposal as well and what's this? Oh, Musée du Quai Branly. Uh, that's like a museum um, showing up some of the oceanic culture. Um, I had that in my initial proposal, um, but I think right now it's not really relevant into what I want to do. Or maybe it is. I just need to read a bit more about it. Um, um, so yeah, in the end, I'd like to design a, a memorial on the culture and history of Tahiti, and as a subtopic, um, the nuclear testing. Uh, it's going to be really challenging. Um, still not too sure what I want to say with my design, um, but that's where I am now. Um, I'll try to make a video, maybe twice a week um, yeah just need to get into the habit uh, anyway um, uh, thank you for watching and um, if you have any questions just post it in comments and I'll get back to you or, or I think you can yeah just post a comment okay